Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Chan. I'm president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 251 of The Funnel. Don't fool yourself how a rainmaker can make you believe all is well. Before we begin, I want to remind you to head on over to alignment-group.com backslash the funnel. Subscribe and we will send you the show notes weekly. First time subscribers, get a free coaching call. Today's agenda Willful ignorance, carrying the load, time for a change and rebuild. Willful ignorance. So let me start by saying that I I came up with this podcast topic or idea when I was sort of reminiscing about days gone by when I first started as a manager and I was talking to somebody about it and some of the experiences that I had. And then as I grew into different roles and responsibilities, how some of my mindsets changed, things that I learned over time and adapted to based on the circumstances and experiences. And and one of them was this sort of willful ignorance if if that's a, a way to put it and willful ignorance you know it basically involves neglecting information information about how you're achieving your target so in other words i'm making my target why why worry about it right and if 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 you're in this situation where maybe there's a rep a superstar rep that's carrying the load for your team or somebody who has a couple of folks that have some major accounts that are carrying the team and the rest of the team's not doing so well or you have folks that are underperforming you're pretty much lying to yourself to the degree that you're hitting your target and you're not worrying about potential disasters or or consequences and you're almost accepting credit when maybe i'm not going to say you don't deserve it but maybe you should look at reducing that risk a little bit. So I call it willful ignorance. You're not really paying attention to how you're getting there. You're just happy you got there. So I've said, you know, I've, I've heard this saying, a lie told often enough becomes the truth. And that's it. You know, you can rationalize how you're achieving your targets. So how are you achieving them? And you can rationalize, well, you know, I've, I've worked hard to coach that, that rep and and he or she, and whether you inherited them or developed them or not, it's, it's not relevant. But it is to some degree, but it's not relevant to this conversation. So you, you, you're you're telling yourself that all is good, and you've got some folks that are middle of the road, and maybe some that are underachieving that you're coaching and telling they're going to be great someday, right? But this rainmaker, or and, and I call it a rainmaker, but keep in mind it could be if you have a six person team, it could be two people carrying the load, right? And then there's those that'll say, well, you know. Um, 80% of the business comes from 20% of the customers. And I guess the same goes for sales reps. I, I don't like that logic and I don't approve of that logic. And I think that's a dangerous game to play. So the will for ignorance side of this is you pretending that all is well. Yes, in fact, you're hitting your number monthly, quarterly, maybe annually for a couple of years and all is well. But nothing lasts forever. So if you're living in that world, you need to think twice about that. That brings us to carrying the load. Okay, so for some people, it's pretty easy, right? You have a team of five people. One person is just producing at a monster pace. That relieves everybody else from hitting the number because you're hitting your number and you're getting to your bonus because they're they're covering for the other four people that aren't performing or whatever number it is. That's an easy thing to look at and say, well, here's my problem. But in some cases, it could be maybe... You have a larger team and it's two or three reps or two or three accounts. And <clears throat> if I were you, I would figure out where my business is coming from. Break down the numbers. Go back to all those podcasts on data and pipeline and metrics. Where is my business coming from? Who's carrying the load for me? Whether that's a large account, a series of accounts, a rep, two reps, three reps. Where's my business coming from? So I'll give you an example of some of the situations I've been in where I managed, um, when I started with this one company, I started as a manager. And I I moved into the role of management from another 
a company. It was a so I got hired as a sales manager. Is what I was trying to say. I don't know why that's so hard to to verbalize. So I moved into this role, and one of the things my boss said to me was, "Look, you know, we we've got this team of folks that these few folks that are doing really well for us on the major account side of the business, and then we have these folks that have geographic territories, and they're the smaller end of the business, and they're doing okay, and we want to build that up." And we want to grow that because we feel like this is a growth area for us. Okay. Didn't think anything of it. <clears throat> you know, that was my task. That was my role. And I started looking at the team. And this is where I started to begin to learn the dangers of a single entity carrying the load. When I started breaking down the numbers, not only for myself, but for the company, I realized there was really only a couple of people there and a few accounts that were carrying the vast majority of business and everybody was pounding their chest like we're having these great months and we're an awesome company and this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm thinking, wow, if we lose that account, we're dead. <clears throat> if we lose that account, we're dead. Or we lose this person who seems to have a stranglehold on some of this business, we're in real trouble. So I wanted to know where the business was coming from. I wanted to know how we got there. I wanted to know what, potentially could be a danger zone or a risk. And then I wanted to know how to do the next thing. Part of it was my little piece of that was to build the team. But I was looking out saying, well, what if long term I evolve here and I move into a different role, I could be responsible for more of this. And in fact, that did happen over a period of a few years. And it, it helped me position myself and, and look at the world a little bit differently. So I understood where the business was coming from by rep, by, by account, who was performing, who wasn't. In areas that I was responsible for, I dealt with it. People who weren't performing were either, either coached up or moved on. And we built a nice little territorial team that was producing at a much higher rate than when I got there. So I looked at the potential dangers, and in my little world, I made, I made some adjustments. So moving into the next role, how do I make those changes? Well, first I look at all my high performers, my middle and my low performers, right? That's the easy part. And I'm saying that because we know who they are. And I looked at the largest account and I said, okay, what if they go away? What does that represent for us? Now that I'm responsible for the whole thing, what does that represent for us? X percentage of the business. And I have these X number of reps over here in, in these territories performing, and then this uh, these other areas of responsibility aren't doing so well. Okay? So I'm saying to myself, how do I improve the number and reduce the long-term risk? So if one part fails, I've got something else. Or if someone leaves or we lose an account, it happens, right? So you want to back, you back yourself up. So here's... My sort of, uh, uh, my plan here, I should say. I don't, don't know why I'm losing words today. My plan was simple. Look at each one of the teams and address performance issues up front. Because that's low-hanging fruit. As far as I'm concerned, it's low-hanging fruit. I've got people that aren't performing, and I need to get them either up or out. Areas, again, that I wasn't responsible for, but now I am. So I took care of that with the managers. Okay, this is what I need you to do. This is how I need you to do it. Middle of the road performers, we're going to evaluate them and decide, can they get better? And if they can get better, we're going to spend some time with them, working with them. We're going to support our high-end reps, and then we're going to bring in some people behind them to start growing each of the, of the divisions. Okay? So I'm looking at, at, at the performers first. Next, I look at the rebuild, and I call it the rebuild. I don't I don't know what you would call it, but I would I call it the rebuild. Not that I'm breaking it down and rebuild. I'm rebuilding areas that maybe need fixing. That's the low low performers, maybe managers that need adjustment. I'm spreading the risk. So I have major accounts, I'll call them, high end accounts. I have geographic territories. I have some vertical and very little on uh, what we call specialty product. So we added a specialty product, two specialty product divisions moved some folks in there and built them up into multi-million dollar divisions. Then we, in addition to that, we added to our verticals, a couple of, of verticals, to spread the risk. And what's the benefit if, you're, if you, your territories are geographic and you add a vertical? 
you're not really taking a lot from everybody. You're taking a little bit when you pull a vertical out. So they don't feel the sting or the pain in their wallet. They don't feel the sting and the pain in their territory. But you have another opportunity to drive business. So we added some verticals. And then we added some larger accounts. Different, different folks going after some different types of accounts. So if we lose an account, a big account, or something bad happens, which in fact it did, we were still in good shape and still could grow the company. So we took that situation, that negative situation, and built it. And I shouldn't say negative. We took a situation where all our, our, all our eggs were in one basket, so to speak. For me, I started out looking at this saying, wait a second. The vast majority of, bit of business comes from a couple of people and a few accounts. For this entire company of you know, a couple of hundred employees. That's insane. We need to do something about that. So we need to strengthen the areas we have that are available now. We need to build new ones. That's what I'm talking about. Now, on a small scale, on a management scale, where you have a team and you have a single rainmaker driving the high percentage of your business, do not let it fool you. Great, you're getting a number. You might even get promoted on it. <clears throat> your, your value will go up, but somewhere along the line, that type of allowing that type of behavior to occur will bite you. Now, I don't have enough time today to go through all the nuances of managing a rainmaker and somebody who probably, in most cases, can be extremely difficult. Sometimes it's just isolating them, allowing them to do the job that they do, they're doing while working on these other areas. Others is prov other times, it's, it's by providing them additional resources and support so they can sell more. And I've done both. Okay, I had a willing partner who said, hey, if you can help me find a way to sell more, let's sell more. And I did that. And we tripled his, his, his business in, that ter in the, his territory, the accounts he was responsible for. I have others that know it all, and they're difficult, and they're really hard to manage. And life's a bear because they know they have the company by the you-know-whats, and there's not a whole lot you can do. Fine, isolate them. Let them go do their thing. Don't even say anything. You do your thing. I'll help you. I'm here to support you, whatever you need. And then go build around them. Add the additional reps. Get rid of the, the underperformers. Coach up the middle of the road. Get them to the point where they're driving business. Then bring in some new people and let them drive some business. Then all of a sudden, that rainmaker is no longer the rainmaker because you've got six or seven people around them performing at a high level. And the world changes for everybody then. That's what I'm talking about with this podcast. Don't fool yourself that everything's well when you have a single entity or a couple of accounts carrying the day. You need to build a strong team and spread the risk and move on into something bigger and better. In the end, this will hurt you. If you allow it to continue, maybe you get away from it in the short term. <clears throat> in some cases, people get promoted and everything else, but at some point it's going to bite you if you let that behavior rule the day. And I think this goes hand in hand with how I talk about managing people and managing teams. Oftentimes I speak to business owners who are in this position. I've got this one person. And they do the vast majority of the selling and they run roughshod over everybody. And I, I'm hesitant to do anything because I can't lose them, blah, 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 blah. And I, I feel your pain. I've been there. If you want me to teach you how to do that, I'll show you how to do it. But follow this, what I just laid out here, and you're good to go. Now, it's not easy to do, but if you just think about what, what the potential disaster could be if they walked or their business, I, I see it happen all the time. <clears throat> or the couple accounts they manage go away. I've, I've seen a rep manage a very large account, huge account, just walk out the door. The account walk out the door after 20 years. It happens. So don't be fooled. Thank you for subscribing to The Funnel, lyman-group.com backslash The Funnel. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, at R, LinkedIn. Email me, jshay at alignment-group.com. My website is alignment-group.com. Yeah, no kidding. Go to the website. We have a library. We have cool stuff there. 
check out the blog. If you subscribe to either the podcast or the blog, you'll get both in your email. One email a week on Thursday with show notes and all the published content that we put out for the week. And of course, new subscribers, like I said, get the free coaching call. Thanks again for subscribing, and as always, keep filling the funnel.